osteogenesis imperfecta has been classified according to the Silence classification. Silence classified osteogenesis imperfecta into four types. In type 1, there is a quantitative problem with collagen production. We see a decrease in the amount of type 1 collagen production. In spite of the decreased production of type 1 collagen, the remaining type 1 collagen whichever is produced is produced with a normal quality and hence these children have a normal or a mild skeletal phenotype with fewer fractures sustained during their lifetime. And it is associated with non-deforming fractures mostly seen in prepubertal children. It is also associated with presenile deafness and aortic regurgitation. In the other three types, that's type 2, 3 and 4, there is an abnormal collagen production, which is in contrast to the decreased collagen production which is seen in type 1. Since the collagen produced is abnormal, the following varieties have a more severe phenotype and sustain far more fractures in their lifetime. In type 2, which is also the most lethal variety of osteogenesis imperfecta, there are multiple rib, long bone and vertebral fractures which are commonly seen even in utero. There is a pulmonary hypoplasia due to the multiple rib fractures and there are central nervous system malformations and hemorrhages. These children either die in utero or soon after delivery. In type 3, which is the most severe form of osteogenesis imperfecta seen in living children, there is triangular facies, a short stature. These children have severe long bone deformities. They have elevated vertebral pedicles, a popcorn appearance of metaphyses and epiphyses and a decreased ability to ambulate. In type 4, which is a moderate variety of osteogenesis imperfecta, there is a short stature. These children may have long bone bowings, scoliosis and joint laxity. To summarize, osteogenesis imperfecta type 2 is the most lethal, followed by type 3, then type 4 and lastly the mild variety which is type 1. Type 1 is also one of the most common forms of osteogenesis imperfecta. This classification has been further modified by different authors based on the type of genes involved in the different types of osteogenesis imperfecta. We have type 5, 6, 7, 8 and so on depending on the type of the genes involved. All these types have a dysregulation of the collagen mineralization and a moderate skeletal phenotype. In type 5, we can see a calcification of the introsious membrane of the forearm, a radial head dislocation and a hyperplastic callus formation. All other types, that is type 5, 6, 7 and so on, form less than 5% of all the children seen with osteogenesis imperfecta.